there any thought to dialing it back and saying less and just not being in the center of it all? Yeah, man, like I said, we're focused on San Francisco. So, like I said, just focus on San Francisco now. I'm just focused on San Francisco, doing what I can to help this team win. Focus on San Francisco, man, not letting anything on the outside distract us from that. Like I said, man, focus on San Francisco. Ah, uh, yeah, like I said, focus on San Francisco, man. Other than answering every question with focusing on San Francisco, <laughs> are you doing anything different uh, to prepare maybe than you would have done before? Just preparing for San Francisco, man. <laughs> That's all I can do. All right, well, after being called out by Coach Jay Gruden for being too critical of his teammates Sunday in a postgame presser, RG3 channeled his best Bill Belichick, as you heard, with the same response. We're focused on San Francisco. However, in a surprise to at least me, Jay Gruden walked back his comments about RG3. It was a mistake on my part. And, uh, you know, after a loss like that, we're very disappointed the way we played. And... Uh, and the question came up about how he played and, and uh, all that stuff, and I just answered it uh, first thing that came to my mind. And sometimes uh, the first thing that comes to your mind isn't the smartest thing, and uh, it wasn't the right thing to do on my part. Um, correction should be made in-house uh, with everybody involved. The play speaks for itself. The production of the, on the field spoke for itself. I didn't have to really elaborate on any individual fundamental uh, things uh, other than the team was not good enough, was not prepared enough, was not coached well good enough to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, so listen, we'll take one at a time. Stephen A, question for you, or you can answer both. How did we feel about the way RG3 handled the press conference and then Gruden's uh, his comments subsequently? <clears throat> the Redskins are a joke. Let's just get that out of the way first. Uh, and Jay Gruden epitomized that as far as I'm concerned with him moonwalking backwards from his initial comments, which obviously were 100 percent right. And he meant wholeheartedly the fact that he backtracked to the degree that he did with the expediency that he did just says to me that Daniel Snyder probably called him upstairs and he had a conversation with them. And Daniel Snyder is still going through um, just just excessive measures to be protective of his franchise quarterback. Jay Gruden was wrong uh, to, to address those things the way that he did with the with this, you know, specificity that he did in a press conference. But he wasn't wrong with what he was saying. And when you make the decision to do that, you stick with it. This is what I love about the Parcells of the world and the Bill Parcells of the world, even Bill Belichick, who would never do such a thing. But if he did, he certainly wouldn't go back and, and, and backtrack like that. It just shows that, you know, the believability factor, authenticity, all of those different things. When it comes to the Redskins, you simply got to take it with a grain of salt. You really, really can't, can't, can't attach anything of significance to it because who knows what kind of influence Daniel Snyder is going to have. That's how I view it. Um, as it pertains to RG3, for all, with all due respect, he's a train wreck. It's just that simple. Because to me, he did himself no favors. I have said repeatedly, Skip Bayless, that RG3, the minute the season was over, considering the litany of questions about his character as it pertains to him being a willing teammate, somebody that's willing to ride and die for teammates, to go all out, to be about more than the RG3 brand and all of that stuff. There was so much that was said about him. You cannot be quiet. You cannot sit idly by and let people talk about you like that without saying anything. Donovan McNabb should have taught RG3 that, okay? But RG3 didn't want to listen. RG3 thought that going into hiding and not saying anything and being completely under the radar for the offseason was going to do the trick. No. The same stuff that was being said about him before was going to be waiting for him this season. And sure enough, look what happens. The second they start losing games, you're hearing about stuff. You're hearing about noise being made in the locker room. Uh, when RG3 was talking to the media and they had to go to a different location, you're hearing about folks that wanted Colt McCoy to remain the starter and then want RG3 back into the lineup. It's not, you know, you, you're hearing all of these things. And then he speaks up. And he says what he says, invoking the name of Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, and others to talk about how everybody's got to do their job for the quarterback to look good. And then after that, when you get called to the carpet for it, your response is to imitate Bill Belichick and say we're talking about the 49ers, 49ers on our mind. Once again, he's dropped the ball when it comes to defending himself, 
speaking up for himself in an appropriate fashion and addressing the things that need to be addressed with the level of fervor and conviction a grown young man should have. Now we don't know what to think, what to make of it, or whatever the case may be. I I'm telling you right now, the way I look at it, as far as I'm concerned, Jay Gruden probably doesn't want RG3 in Washington, and, and, and RG3 might be smart enough not to want to be in Washington much longer because it doesn't appear as if his teammates, the coach, or the fan base particularly is excited about him being in the Washington Redskins uniform any longer. You initially called the Redskins a joke. Jokes are funny to me. Some teams become jokes and they're almost funny to watch. There's nothing funny about this to me whatsoever. This Fair. is a flat out disaster. I, I hate to go to train wreck because I don't want to call it an actual disaster, but it's just a sports disaster. I'm gonna take them one at a time in reverse. L let's go to, wh what did I tell you yesterday after we talked about Jay Gruden's comments. I said, either Jay Gruden <coughs> asked for and received permission from this owner who has overprotected this quarterback, or Jay Gruden flat out defied the owner when he took a stand against the franchise quarterback going back two days ago. Well, w which is it? I'm not sure, but either he got called on the carpet for his remarks, which would be a really bad sign, or maybe out of the goodness of Jay's heart, he thought, well, I, I made my statement. Now I need to back off and play good cop to the bad cop that I was the day before. I have an idea, you're right about this, that the owner said that will not be tolerated within the confines of these doors of the Washington Redskins. Now, to RG3, and again, I have defended him and defended him and defended him because I really believe in this kid and believed in him before the draft, and I still believe he could be a very good player. But he's got big issues because yesterday was another bad sign. In fact, I thought yesterday was a worse sign than his post-game remarks in which he blamed himself, then blamed effectively all of his teammates. Yesterday was another me, me, me. It, it, was, another, it was just way too cute. Oh, because we all knew right away, oh, he's going Bill Belichick. Oh, we get it. Ha, 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 Robert. I'm only focused on San Francisco. I'm only focused on San Francisco. I'm only focused on San Francisco. It's another diva move. It's not what I wanted to hear. If he's going to, to go ahead and speak to the media on schedule, I wanted to hear, thank you very much, Coach, for calling me out because I deserved it. Everything Coach, I wanted to hear this from RG3, everything Coach Gruden said about me was accurate. I blew my drops. My, my three steps were five steps. I stepped up too often, stepped right into pressure. He was exactly right, and I've got to clean these things up. Did you hear any of that? Obviously, you did not. It's a bad sign. It's, he, he's saying it all with a hint of a grin, like, uh, so, so this is how I got to act to you media people. If you're going to do that, then just don't speak at all. I'd be much better off if he just said, hey, I'm done. I don't want to talk to the media anymore. But no, we had to go, I'm just focused on San Francisco. It's another attention grab. And frankly, help me out here, didn't that attract even more attention yes. than what he said after the game the other day? That's all we're talking about. It's, 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 one of our, it's our number one NFL topic today. Just stop it, Robert. You have lost all perspective on who you are. Skip, one of the things that you didn't mention is that it not only came across in every way that you just described it, it also came across as if he picked up the phone or went and saw the owner, Daniel Snyder, and said, look at what's being done to me. Now, Did I'm they? in, no way, now, I'm in yep. no way saying that that happened because I have no knowledge of it. I'll leave that okay. to the great reporters covering the Washington Redskins, both on television and on there radio and in newspaper. Yep. What I am saying is that it looked as if he said, you know what, he just buckled, he just hunkered down, and it's like it's me against them, meaning me against the coach, me against the people in the soccer room, me against the media, whatever yep. the case may be. So let me go to the big boss to reel this in for me. That's how it looked. And if, and, it, and if it looked that way to me, 
chances are there are some people in that locker room that think like that. And if they think like that, you know how it is. They're going to huddle amongst themselves. They're going to talk behind his back and they're going to view him again as your, your to use your words as a prima donna. Yep. And as a result of that, they're not going to want to deal with this guy. He's not somebody that they're going to want to go out there and fight with or for. And that's just the situation. And again, remember, I haven't spoken to Deshaun Jackson, but I've known Deshaun Jackson <coughs> for a long time. And him coming out with that stuff the other day on Instagram in the immediate aftermath of RG3's comments are no accident. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just a bad situation made considerably worse and unnecessarily so by a guy named Robert Griffin III who could have alleviated all of this stuff if he would have been a man enough to come out and speak up for himself. Yep. Once the season was over, instead of running and hiding and thinking that being inaccessible was going to somehow quell and diminish the momentum swelling against them. That's the problem. I, and, and I'm not somebody, yes, I know that I have a platform, you have a platform, and we could talk all day until the cows come home. That's what we do for a living. So I understand that some uh, an athlete shouldn't have the mentality that I want to take on people, or I want to fight over every little thing. I totally respect that, but that's as it pertains to the game. When it comes to your character and what people are saying about you as a man and you go silent and go into hiding and, and, and leave Daniel Snyder and others to speak up for you, if anything, you should be moving everybody aside and saying, okay, now we're talking about something I am an expert on, which is me, my character, yeah. what I stand for, who I am, and he has not done that. And that is one of the reasons why he's going to have a hard time resurrecting his name, his brand, his reputation, etc. Because you do not get away with hiding when somebody is attacking your character. It doesn't work. Last quick point on Deshaun that you brought up. Deshaun went out of his way yesterday in his interview session to bring up the fact of how close he came to signing with San Francisco. Yeah. Just to, to, to yeah. send the message of he's trying to distance himself from this mess. And he's, he's basically telling you, I think I made a mistake. Right. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We, we got to wrap, gentlemen.